Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for this clay to poe, one eye, one cheek, one lip, get ready with me. So the idea behind one eye, one cheek, one lip is to get a new palette for the eyes, a cheek product and a lip and put a look together. So I have a clay to poe palette number three today. I did one last time with a few other items. I also looked for a blush. Now I couldn't find a blush that I hadn't used before or anything new. So I wanted to try a new blush technique that I haven't tried on camera. So not a new cheek product, but a new technique I haven't tried yet. And then we have a new lip, which is this one right here. Number two, Warm Crystal. This is actually closer to an almost full face of Clay de Peau products because I have a base product. I've got bronzer, concealer, of course. I've got their mascara on. I've got their powder on as well. And so many products that I love by Clay de Peau. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with a non Clay de Peau product. I don't think I have a primer now that I, now that I think of it. So we're gonna go in with La Base Illuminatrice by Chanel. It has some lovely blurring properties to it. And it also helps my makeup last longer. Okay, we're also gonna try something a little bit different here. I was looking at a technique that I really like the idea of. I feel like I've tried this before, but let's try it again. This is from a limited edition collection they did, but this is in the shade, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to tell you the shade down below. But I liked it, oh, it's 201, it was midnight, no, what's it called? Something, warmth. Warmth magic. And I liked it because it had a lovely warmth to it, but also just kind of a neutral color. So I thought this would be a good one. Really uh, intense pigmentation. This is a Clay de Peau blush brush. Great for their blushes. So I thought we would try this first and then go in with foundation. I haven't actually tried this yet. Okay, it's vibrant. So this will be good though. Let's put it on a little bit heavier because then that way the foundation of course will do a little bit of coverage and probably take that down a little bit. So I read it how it was a nice natural look to do this first with a cream blush and then add foundation. So I love the brush with this though. It's a really nice way to diffuse this cream product. So let's just go for it here because I wanna see how this works. Yeah, right here looks like a lot of color, but you can see how natural, I mean, this is not a great look, but you can see how natural it looks on the skin. It just becomes one with the skin in terms of the color. In fact, it looks like I was out in the sun, a lot of sun. So we're gonna leave that there for a minute. Let's go ahead with a little foundation. Now, I have this one, which I love. It's their Radiant Cream Foundation, and I have this in 030. So we already know this is going to be light for me. It was light for me when I was on the lighter side, but, now it's going to be really, really light. Okay, we're gonna mix this with a little bit of this product by Chantecai. It's their anti-aging face tint, which you know is a really great shade for me in the summer. So when I was really, really tan, I used just this color, which is pretty deep in terms of what shades I am. Like it's a deeper on the spectrum for me. So I'm just mixing them together. I haven't tried this. So this is going to be a little experiment for us. And I think I put too much of the Clay de Peau product on because it's really light. Let's see. Let me just adjust the ratio here. Do a little bit more of this and a little less of the Clay de Peau. There's just going to be like a little bit of Clay de Peau mixed in here. But if you have foundations that you need to adjust for your summer color, you can do that. So I've got that mixed in there. In this Shiseido brush, oh gosh, I'm a mess though. As suspected, I thought it might move around a little bit. It is moving around a little bit. The, sorry, the blush is moving around a bit. So maybe I need to not apply so much pressure. You definitely have to be thoughtful about how much pressure is being added because it will move that blush around a little bit. I think maybe some practice too. I think maybe sweeping on the exterior and then just stippling lightly right here might be better. That's pretty. I like the way that it looks. I think it meshes well, but I think, yeah, I need to practice a little bit more how to place that foundation so it doesn't disrupt the blush underneath as much as I did, because I can see it's a little bit more intense in some places than others. But we'll go over this with powder and that's gonna help. Let's go in with a little bit of Chanel concealer under the eye. And of course, 
Clay de Peau Concealer in Honey. And I hope you saw the posting. Yeah, when I see this go on sale, I post it because it's usually like 15% off in places like Nordstrom or Saks. And so I know this is something I'll use all the way up and many of you are like that too. So I um, definitely make sure to share that. I'm gonna go ahead and just perfect this and then let me add some brows really fast. I did a couple other things while I did the, um, what did I say I did? Oh, my brows. I went in with my eye primer, I found it, the Chantecaille in medium. I also went in with the Clay de Peau. Gosh, yes. One of you let me know this is not available because they were discontinuing or have discontinued this. I saw that they were reformulating something though, the caviar part of the skincare, so I wonder. I really, really love the result here, so definitely on the hunt for something as close to this as possible. Honey concealer in the corners. I used Dior products for brows, the number 33 in the pencil and 32 in the brow gel. I've got this Clay de Peau powder. It's very nice. I haven't had a chance to revisit it since I picked it up. So I've got a number, let's try this 24. That's very dense. We'll try the 24 though and see how this works. I don't usually go under my eye, but it seems like a really nice one to go under the eye. I'll try it just on the exterior here, exterior. Ooh, someone asked me about their um, previous eyeshadows. I have one here. So I have some thoughts about the new version versus the previous, which I really loved. I love the previous version, but I think the newer ones, and we'll see if that's the case with today's palette. The newer ones are a different aesthetic. Okay, so let's go ahead with bronzer brush, number four brush, refer. So I'm just gonna kind of mix the two of these. Oh, I have this in the shade two. I'm gonna try to resist using the Chantecaille Perfect Blur today. Let's see how it goes. I already say I want to. I think we'll try a powder blush on top as well. And I really enjoyed the previous palette that I tried, number one. And today we're going in with number two. No, just kidding. Number three, I think. Let me look. What did I do? Here it is. Here it is. We've got the number three in here. It's this one. It has a little bit of plumminess to it. And I had a question about how number one compares to Rue, not Rue de Rivoli. Um, to say Rivoli by Chanel, and it actually reminded me of that as well. This is number three. Almost popped out there. This is number three in Driftwood. Make sure it snaps in that case, otherwise it will fall out. Go ahead with, oh, I haven't played with this one at all. Oh, let's take this Shade and Sweet brush by Chantecaille. Uh, I'm gonna take this color right here. And there's a bit of a, like a lavender tone in there. like. I cannot see it here, but it's not until I put it on my eye that I can see. The last one was very elegant and the way that it looked on camera was really pretty. So in my mind, it's like a more lightweight, less intense version than say Tissé Rivoli. If you want that impact of that color, that say Rue de, oh no, why do I keep saying that? The intensity of the color of something like Tissé Rivoli, this one is probably not the type of palette for you, but if you're looking for something more understated and a little bit more refined, I'm gonna say go with the Clay de Peau. Okay, so then let's go with this color in the crease. It does have a glow to it. Pretty though, it reminds me of like a mocha lavender shade right there. So let's see how it looks on. Now this is a number 27 refer. Going in really lightly because I'm afraid, yeah. This one has a little bit more pigment, it seems, at least here, uh, than the number one did. Go ahead with number, with this color. And this one looks pretty, really pretty. It's like a plummy brownish shade. And this definitely has intensity to it. So you can smoke this one out for sure. Something very beautiful. I think if you layered this, like started off with this as a base, kind of like I did with the Byredo palettes. I don't know if you remember those. I loved those. I feel like this has that same ability to do that, to be able to build with a base of a dark color. I'm gonna take this shade, this shade again. I'm gonna go in between here just to kind of soften that. 
I find because my eyelids are small, it's easier just to apply like this versus a brush because the brush will get a little bit out of control, not out of control, it's just uh, there are very few brushes, eye brushes that are small enough to do that. So let's go ahead with this shade right here, right in the middle. So quick and easy, that's what I love. So the first palette I tried by Clay Depot was like this, like I didn't take time at all or <laughs> actually a lot of effort to put this on. Um, and then I'm gonna take this color right here and let's just add that to the very center very sophisticated palettes here. This is one that I did not realize was waterproof until I went to try to remove it and I thought, why is this so difficult to remove? It's because it's waterproof. So Clay Depot Mascara. Okay, we're almost there. Let's do a little powder blush and let's go in with the, we're going with the pinkier tone, although Hmm. The one lip I have is, I guess it's more neutral. We'll see how it goes. Um, we've got here 102. So let's take this number 37. I'm just taking this lighter shade here and just dotting on the front. Let's take a little bit more, I'll combine them. A little bit of the deeper and the lighter. It's a little pinker than I wanted. Let's go back to the bronzer. I'll take this shade here and see if we can make that a little bit less pink. Now let's take some Perfect Glory Powder. This is Chantecaille. Taking just a little bit of trench here by Victoria Beckham. Okay, and then let's do the lip. What did I do with it? I had to get out of my bag. I've been wearing it a lot. It's the, it's in Two Warm Crystal. It's their Radiant Lip Gloss. Well, let's do a little a bit of marble while we're at it. Victoria Beckham, just contour the nose slightly. doing a last minute run here right through there because I feel like the light catches these shadows so beautifully and they just mesh into each other seamlessly so that was my experience with the first palette that is my experience with this second palette I'm gonna have to pick up another one just to try them out I'd like to do the cool shades first so I've done one and three which are cool. So let me know if you want me to try neutral or warm shades next. Now I'm not as excited about the warm shades just because I know what happens. It just gets lost on my skin tone. But if you want me to try, I will try at least one warm one. So let me know, neutral or warm after I'm done with the cool palettes. Um, I also had questions about how this compares to the former palettes. So the former palettes, in my opinion, um, so let me know if you have the same opinion, were more intense in their pigmentation and there was more intermittent shimmer in the previous palettes. So you could see it more easily. These are very soft in their glow. They're more sheer. They're very delicate shadows in their appearance. Not the, um, it's not like they're crumbly or anything like that. The appearance is very delicate. I feel like it's really forgiving on the eye area and just brightens the eye area as well. Um, so yeah, I really love the new formula. Let me know what you think, especially those of you who have had a lot of experience with the quads. And I think I've tried most of the ones I had before, but I prefer this new formula. It's really sophisticated, really effortless in application and appearance, but you can get very classic looks with these shadows. So I wasn't going to actually pick up more of the shadows, but now I do want to work my way through this and I believe they're not limited edition. I believe they're permanent. So kudos to Benjamin, who's a makeup artist with Clay Depot, who created these palettes. I really love them, but let me know what you think. It is a very um, specific look though. It's almost for those people who want very 
discreet, very subtle makeup, which is what I'm loving now. So it was perfect for somebody like me. But I enjoy putting this look together and I'm excited about trying more Glade Po palettes. So if you have a palette that you love that I haven't tried yet, let me know what that is. Let me know if your coloring is similar to mine or what your coloring is so that those people who I know watch who don't have similar coloring to me will know that it will work for them too. But that is it for today's video. So please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.